Well, let's start today laying down on our backs. I have my bolster here. If you do not have a bolster, you can use your uh, blankets, one on top of each other. And if you need to place the blocks underneath your blankets, you can do so. So depending on how high you can be, right? And how much of a curvature you can perform at the beginning of a Sunday. So <laughs> take it easy. Um, maybe place one blanket and then find out and notice how the back of your body feels. And if it's not mm, a deep sensation, you can always place another on top of it. So just find a way to create a bolster. Place the sacrum against and just lay down completely. Noticing how each vertebra releases on top of your prop. And then again, always taking a moment to pause and notice, is it too much? Can I take a couple of breaths here before moving to the next step? Can I unwind enough from here? Or does it feel like it's too much and should I back up? So take at least a three to five for mindful breaths through the nose. And then decide if from here you want to extend your legs or not. If you want to maintain them cross or if you can extend the legs all the way forward on the mat. If this is not your cup of tea, then just lay down completely on your mat or without any props underneath you. Begin to close your eyes and work on your breath, inhaling and sounding through your nose. Just becoming more aware of your breath in here. Bringing all your attention to your physical body. How do you feel today? What are the needs that your physical body has? What are the expectations that you have? And if you can go ahead and move the attention from the center of your eyebrows, from the third eye, all the way down to your chest to your belly, to your hips, to your legs. So settle down here. If you're using your props underneath your spine, then notice how the lower back begins to arch in a very gentle, mindful way because it is supported by those props. You can just relax it here through the breath and release the bones, the muscles, your ligaments on top of your bolster or on top of your mat. Let's scan here the body from the toes all the way to your ankles. To your shin bones, the back of your legs, your thighs. Another time we're illuminating the area of the body, you are going to come more and more relaxed. your hips, your buttocks, every area of the body releasing from you, relaxing you. With the belly, the ribcage, the chest, your back, your neck, your shoulders, Your arms, your fingers, your 
trays in the back of your head. Your jaw, your lips, and moving your tongue down the ceiling of your mouth. Your eyelids, and going all the way to your third eye. Do the mindful breaths here. Just giving time to go back to our spine to really elongate and to settle in this position that we're creating and educating the spine for the back bends that are common, gentle back bends. Very good. Slowly extend your arms above your head, grab one of your wrists, and just pull the arm to the back of the room. Now what is it? Your breath is shallow if it's deep, if it's short. Grab your other wrist and continue to reach it back through the, the fingertips. Stretching the right side of the force of it. Now, lift those arms all the way up towards the ceiling. Be careful. Be gentle with a bit back. And now lift, lift, lift. So your shoulders are out of their socket. And then go ahead and send the shoulders down into their socket. And again, like broadening the back, the upper back. And all the way down, like if the shoulder blades want to touch. And then up again. And then down. And one more. And then down. Very good. Release those hands on the floor, arms on the floor, and begin to bend your knees. Be very gentle. Now lift the hips, tuck the navel up, and again release the sacrum down. Open up your feet. Mat this is a part. Just stay here for a couple of breaths. Transitioning from this back bend now to a seating position. We'll just take another breath here before we roll to the right side. Especially if you are on top of your props, be very gentle. Slowly go ahead and roll to the side. Move your prop and go ahead and seat on a blanket or your seating bones. Sukhasana is supposed to here crossing the center of your shin bones. Very good. And now let's place the fingertips right next to our hips. They begin to move the fingertips away from your body. Do so you want the 10 fingertips on the floor? Lift the center of your palm all the way towards the ceiling and keep walking very slowly the fingertips to the side. You want to feel it around the neck, you want to feel it in the traps and across the collarbones. So lift it through the breastbone. Tuck the chin under so you can feel a deeper stretch. Keep walking. Even if it's just moving, lifting the fingertips up the mat and then placing them down again. Very good. A couple more here, a couple of more breaths. Nice. Very good. With the right hand, we're just going to help the neck stretch a little bit more by placing the hand in the outer ear and just tilting the head to the side as we release that left shoulder away and down. Very gentle. Nice shot. This is the other side. The left hand is going to grab the outer 
the side of your head as you tilt the head to the left. And take a couple of breaths here from the pelvic floor to the crown of the head. Maintain your tension here in the present. Nice shot. Let's go ahead and now change the cross of the legs and place a block on the outside of your right hip. Let's stretch to the right side. I'm going to place my forearm and I'm just going to reach with my left arm the right wall. Just send that right shoulder back. Like if you could touch the wall behind you and you can feel the spaces, right? That separate you from the wall. So push it back through your spine and through the shoulders. So if you could touch that wall. There is one more here. And you come back. Now place the block on the left side. You want to have your elbow under your shoulder, lift the right arm up, just to reach. Again, it's not about facing the floor with the chest and the shoulders. If you want to touch the back wall with your whole body, so keep revolving the ribcage towards the ceiling. Couple more breaths. Nice job. Let's go ahead and come back. I'm going to use my blocks again, but now to pinch forward from the hips. So, sitting bones are breathing down. Begin slowly to slide your arms so forward. You can use your blocks or not. And just stop again. Take it very slowly here because you don't want to lift the seating bones. So keep reaching forward, rooting. As you rebound through the crown of the head, and create more length in the size of your torso. And now let the head hang and keep reaching forward. You want to stretch those muscles around your spine, lower, middle, and upper back. Breathe in through the nose to expand the ribcage one more. And shop everyone. Go ahead and slowly come up. Good. Let's come into our hands and knees for some cat cow poses. With our hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Press through the palms, press through the top of your feet. Inhale, chest pulls forward. And whenever you're ready, exhale and round the spine, tucking the tailbone down towards the floor. And again, inhale, chest pulls forward. And around the spine. Try to maintain those arms completely straight. The crease of your elbows facing each other. And again. And around. And two more. On your own pace. Notice in the extension, the contraction. Very good. Let's come into neutral position. Open up your knees a little bit wider. Let's twist. I'm going to start with my right hand in the center. I'm going to rotate the ribcage to the left. As I rotate and lift my left shoulder up, I might be able to lift my arm up. Now, I want only to be my chest that is rotating to the left side, so I'm going to send my left hip bone down to the floor. So coming to a tabletop pelvis, right? Your hips want to look down like if you were in tabletop. 
One more breath. Push through that right hand. Nice shot. Go ahead and send the arm to the floor, the shoulder, and place the left temple on the floor. Grab your wrist and pull the arm away from you. Knee of the belly, in and up. Bottom of breath. Very good. Let's push ourselves up into it again. Tabletop position. So notice that in tabletop, your hip bones are facing down. So that's the same thing we want to do when we do it. So now the left hand is going to be in the center, under your shoulder, and you begin to rotate to the right side. Lift the arm if you feel like it. If you feel, place the hand on your lower back. But now send the hip bones down, face the floor. So you want to feel the twist from the lower rib cage all the way to the shoulder to the fingertips. Keep shifting your hips to the left. One more. And go ahead and place it on our shoulder, right side of your face on the floor. Grab your wrist and hold the arm. And the hardest thing to do while we're practicing yoga. Be following the natural path of your breath. Notice how it moves, how it stands, how it contracts. Good, everyone. Let's slowly push ourselves up. Before we go into our first downward jog, extend the right leg all the way back. And let's just rock ourselves back and forth to really create a stretch from the right heel to the Achilles tendon, then to the calf, and then all the way to the back of your knee. And just back and forth. Very gently rocking yourself here. Nice. Two more. Very good. Please have right knee on the floor. Second side. Just going to your toes and then all the way to the ball of your feet and then forward and then back again. One more. Very good, everyone. Let's move your those hands up forward, six to twelve inches. Now they're not under your shoulders anymore. Press those the palms on the floor and lift the hips up and back into your downward facing dog. And walk the dog here. Paddle your dog. You lift the shoulder blades away from your ears. Send the shoulder blades, the upper and back, all the way to your buttocks. So as you're releasing the shoulder blades closer to your head, lift the shoulders up towards the buttocks. Couple more here. Nice job, but really let's place the knees on the floor one or more time. Grab one of your blocks, place the block foot forward, and now place the right foot on top of your block. If you don't have a block, you can use a book. If you don't have a big, thick book, then you can even grab your um, blanket and just make it so it will emulate a 
block. Keep bending here. You can stretch in the hip flexors layer by layer. I'm releasing my right elbow on top of my right thigh just to help press and bend a little bit deeper here. Couple more. Nice shot. Let's go ahead and place the hands on the floor, release that, and move that a foot away from the block. Now, second time, I'm going to place my block on the left side and place my left foot on top. Right hip flexor, stretch, and as I lift my pubic one towards the navel, and I direct my tail one towards the floor. One side feels more open than the other one. Be gentle, but notice those difference. One more breath. Very good. Hand to the floor, slowly and gently move the foot down and facing doggy back. Very good. And let's lift the right leg up and send the right knee to the chest, placing the foot in between the hands. Go ahead and micro the back knee and lift up into Alanasana. Now hook your thumbs here in Alanasana and lift those arms as much as you can. If the shoulders, you're nursing your shoulders. If there's something going on in your shoulders and you need more space, then palms face each other instead of hooking those thumbs. Now stay here, internally rotating the arms towards your face, releasing the shoulders away from your neck. Begin to come into um, turkey up. Extending the back leg completely. And just reaching through the crown of the head and the fingertips. Now my arms are aligned with my ears, so try to lift those arms as much as you can. And instead of trying to reach down with your head, reach it forward and up. One more breath. Very good, a little bit of balance here. Micro bend the back knee and move the left foot closer to the right foot. Sit on your chair, move the tassel. You can separate now your thumbs. One more here. Forward fold, everyone. Stay here, forward folded. Notice the hamstrings being blocks on your hands. Now grab your elbows with each hand. Take a good breath. We'll stretch. You might feel it from the back of your knee all the way to your buttocks this time. I prefer if you micro bend the knees instead of rounding your back. So maintain the chest pulling forward. If you need to micro bend your knees because your hamstrings still feel very tight, go ahead and micro bend. One more breath here. Shot the right hand to your shimas halfway up on a putanasana forward fold. Very good. Lift yourself up with the hastasana, stretch it here, and palm to your palm. Sorry, your name is card A. Inhale, lift those arms. Exhale, forward fold. Micro bend if you need to inhale halfway up. Exhale, step to plank, top of a push. Place the knees on the floor or not, chop it on all the way to the mat. Hands right next to your lower legs. Very good. Shoulders are backing away from the ears. Top of the feet pressing down, lift the chest. And release the head to the floor. Inhale, lift the chest. 
shoulders back. Exhale, fold. One more time, maintain those elbows in towards each other. And release. Very good. Find your way to downward facing dog from here. Take three to five mindful breaths. Remember to fold the upper body, the upper back, all the way to your buttocks and hips. So you don't want to release those shoulders close to your neck, but you lift them all the way up and create a, a feeling of broadening the upper back. And then to the breath one more time. Very good. Second side, lift the left leg up. Send the left knee to the chest and place the foot in between your hands. Go ahead and micro bend the back knee and lift into Alanasana. Go ahead and hook your thumbs again. You try to hook them in the other way, right? And stay here, working on that upper body. And so, internally rotated arms, shoulders down. Arms are completely straight. Even if you cannot see them from here, you can align the crease of your elbow so they can face each other, like when, like if you are, like if you were in um, tabletop position. So go ahead and send those elbows towards each other. Take one more breath. Go ahead and extend the back leg and reach the forward to the feet or keep pushing through the front and heel. And really engage their muscles behind the left to leg. One more here. Very good. Bend the back knee and go ahead and place the foot forward. Chair pose. The toes touch, heels are separated. Big. Bend here on the knee. So one more. Two, forward pull, everyone. Grab your elbows again, Baru. And place your other forearm in front. Notice the difference now on your hamstrings. They might feel a little bit more stretched now. You can help press those thighs to the back of the room so you can now straighten those legs a little bit more. One more. Now shout her when hands to your shin bones halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Push yourself up with Pita Hastasana. And palms to heart, sound speed. Very good. Let's work on the thighs that we've been doing it and also the shoulders. I'm going to grab my strap and then I'm going to open up the distance in between my feet. So when I open up my arms, I want to kind of have my feet under my hips, right? And my toes are pointing forward. I'm using the whole mat. So hmm, we're going to forward fold. I'm going to grab this strap. In my hands, and I'm going to extend my arms all the way forward. Good. So the way I want to grab this strap, it's a little bit wider than a shoulder width apart. So I want to create a lot of space. Good. And lift the arms up. Internal rotated arms, broadening the upper back. Very good. We're going to hinge it forward from the hips, maintaining the arms up. Now. 
The arms doesn't have to go all the way back. They're still aligned with my ears. So when we hinge forward, try to remember where your arms are so they can still stay in the same position. And it's just warming up here. Here we go. Micro bend the knees and reach forward, reach forward. Don't reach down, forward. Press it through the four corners of each foot and lift the arches of your feet. You can micro bend the knees if you need to, but try to stretch as much as you can from the back of your knee to your buttocks. Keep reaching forward through your hands and your strap. Shoulders away from the ear, one more time. Very good, push yourself and yourself up. Nice. Now we're gonna go a little bit more deeper with the arms. Send this drop all the way back slowly. So now we are grabbing this strap all the way back where the hips are. Same thing. Micro bend a little bit the knees, open up the chest. And here we go, hinge it forward. And now send the arms to the back of the rib as you keep sending also the shoulders away from the ears. Try to reach your back through those hands. Release the head. One more breath. Nice job. Micro bend the knees. Push yourself up. Very good. Now go ahead and place this chopper down. Now we're going to go ahead. The same thing, but try to grab the toes with your hands. If you're not able to grab the toes with your hands, no worries. Place the hands very close to your feet. Okay? So here we go. Hands to your waist. Elbows in like if you were in Chataranga. Shoulders away from the ears, slowly micro bend the knees if you need to. Reach it forward and now extend the arms to the side. It's trying to touch your toes or your feet. If you don't touch them, no worries. Just place them as close as you can. Release the head down. And if you're touching your the toes, lift the elbows all the way up towards the ceiling. If you, were, if you had a um, beach ball in between your legs, go ahead and squeeze the beach ball. So you can engage those inner thighs. Try not to run, you're not tucking the chin on and you're trying to reach it forward and down. One more. Nice job, everyone. Hands to the floor, halfway up. Nice up and forward fold again. Toe heel, toe heel your feet. Nice, big toe touch. To sit on your chair, Utkatasana. Let's twist from here. Right hand on thigh, press the thigh down as you bend the left elbow and place it on this side. So you want to strap that elbow to the outside of that right thigh. Seat on your chair, very, very, very low. Right elbow facing up, left elbow facing down. One more. So go ahead and forward fold. Notice those hamstrings, how they feel comparing to where we started. Very good, big toes touch again. Heels are separated. Seat on your chair. Left hand on your thigh, press the thigh down as you now revolve to the left side, palms together, close your heart. See it, everyone. Try to place more weight on your butts. I know that it feels like it's too much, but you'll be fine. Place the weight on your buttocks instead of your toes. And forward fold. Very good. All the way up, with the Hastasana. And palms to heart. Samasthi. Nice shot. Let's come into the front of the mat in Tadasana for a couple of poses here. Standing poses while we flow into our Vidyasana. 
Here we go. Inhale all the way up. Repeat the Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, step to plank, top of a cushion. Exhale here, Chaturanga. Stay low in cobra, lift into your urban mudra, upward facing dog. And press back whenever you're ready to downward facing dog. Let's take the right leg up. Send the right knee to the chest. Place the foot in between your hands. Now, move the right foot to the right side and stay here in lizard. You can always use a block underneath your forearms. But the right foot, it's rooting down. So I'm not lifting the sole of the foot. The toes are still pointing forward. My right foot is very close to the right edge of the mat. And shot, lift, 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 lift. The back thigh off the mat. And relax the chest as much as you can towards the floor. One more here. I know it looks like I'm bending the back leg, but it's just a big bag of hands. So keep lifting that. Knee and a thigh. One more. There to release the back knee down. Now with your right hand, go ahead and open up the hip. Now you can see the right this side of your uh, sole of the foot. Maybe lift the right arm up. Open up the heart here as you keep it. Bending and twisting one more. Nice job, everyone. Hands to floor, lift that and place that right foot in the center. Step to plank. Go ahead and flow. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. Lift the left leg up, send the left knee to the chest and place the foot in between your hands. Slowly move that left foot to the outer edge of your mat. Nice. You can use a block under your hands for more support. If you want to try to release the forearms on top, be good. If not, that's good as well. Just be gentle and we're just opening here the hips and stretching the hip flexor. So if you think it's enough, it's enough. Toes are pointing forward, the foot is completely on the floor. Lay the size of your waist. One more. Nice shot. Go ahead and release the back knee down. And now with your left hand, hand open up the hip. Now you can see the sole of your foot. If you feel like it, you can let the left arm up. Rotate the rib cage all the way up towards the ceiling. And whenever you're ready, you can go down. Now, this time, instead of stepping to plank, we're going to step forward into Malasana. So I'm going to go ahead and bend my back knee and push my right foot forward. And if I have a block, that same block that I was using, to release my forearms, I can sit on it. If you don't want to sit on a block and you want to, 
Maintain your heels on the floor wherever you are. And if your heels and touch the floor, then use your, your blanket. <clears throat> you can roll the blanket so you can place it under your heels. Now here, just let the pelvis, the pelvic floor to release completely as you lift through the crown of the head. With your elbows, press those knees to the back of the room. And shot one more breath. Very good, everyone. You can now find a way to sit. Good. Look what we're going to do. We're going to practice very quick here, uh, Bakasana, right? So the way I like to um, practice is with blocks underneath my feet, especially if your thighs, your lower body hasn't warm up and not, right? We did a lot for the thighs and for the hamstrings to lift up the buttocks, but if you need a little bit more, blocks are perfect to support your practice. So, I'm gonna place my feet on top of my blocks. And because I have my bolster, you can use your, um, your um, blankets as well. I'm gonna place it here in front of me. In case I fall, at my head will be down touching the, my prop. Here we go. <clears throat> so I'm gonna place my hands on the floor, right? And I'm rounding my back completely. My knees are already touching my armpits, right? It works in my body that way. So when I lift myself up, when I lift my buttocks up, I want to bend my elbows. And I want to bend my elbows and maintain my elbows in chataranga. Okay? I don't want my elbows to splay out. Okay? So lift the buttocks and send the weight forward and place those knees on top of your triceps or very close to your armpits. Good. If I, fall, I can place my head, my head here very comfortably, right? But I don't wanna place my head down because the that requires for you to have your head up as you slowly begin to lift your feet off the mat. So you don't have to lift the feet up, but at least let's play a little bit with the upper body. So hands on the floor. Send the weight forward. Arms are in chaturanga. Right? Stay here. You're gonna push with those hands so you can lift yourself up. Okay, so push down. Don't place all the way on your triceps. Push through the hands so you can lift the buttocks even more. And then from here, if you feel like it, you try to lift one foot and then the other, right? And if you want to lift both, then go ahead and lift both. <laughs> lift the head. If something happens, the bolster is right there to support your practice, okay? So it is a lot for the triceps, so don't, if you're trying very hard and you really want to do it, don't. So don't get surprised if tomorrow you have a little bit of a bruise on the back of your triceps. So again, if you want, if you wish to try another option, you can also place the hands on the blocks. But this requires then more stretch on your hamstring. So I'm going to place my hands on the block. I'm going to lift my buttocks up. And then I'm going to place my knees on top of my triceps, right? And then I might be able to lift my feet up, little by little, okay? So there's another way to practice placing the hands on the blocks. So I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, breaths here to find your way. I like using the props, the blocks under my hands more because now I have more space to lift my feet. And I haven't practiced this in a long while, so 
It doesn't have to, the feet doesn't have to live as much. You just want to feel comfortable enough to lift at least the toe. Maintain those arms in, in Chaturanga. Couple more. And whenever you're ready, release and shove everyone. Let's sit down and let's twist. So I'm going to go ahead and come into Dandasana with my legs forward and my hands right next to my hips. You bend right knee and you can maintain the right foot on the inside of that left leg or you can cross it. Okay, so whatever feels comfortable. And let's say you're holding the pose, whether you're crossing it or you're placing the foot right next to the left. Just hold the pose to really, really elongate your back. Shoulders down instead of left, 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 and through the back first. Very good. Let's twist to the right. The left arm is going to hug the right leg. And both sitting bones here are rooting down. So don't get the right buttocks. Right arm circles up and back, fingertips on the floor. If you're here, this works too. It's, it's a deeper stretch if you're crossing the leg for the outer hips. Couple of breaths. Nice shot. Everyone is forward and now extend that right leg all the way. Now let's bend the left to one. And as you bend, you can feel the left buttocks lifting now. Go ahead and release it down. That's why we take a couple of breaths here to really root down and to rebound through the crown of the head. Whether you're crossing the leg or not, don't forget about that right leg and take a deep in a neutral position. Very good. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and hug with the right arm circle. Circle the left all the way. Fingertips or the whole palm can touch it before now. Lift through the breastbone. One more right here. Let's yeah, ahead and release. It's coming to place your feet together. Placing our feet together. We're just going to forward fold to hmm, unwind a little bit. Those hip flexors. Very good. So move your heels away from your hip bones and slowly begin to forward fold. If you need your props underneath your arms, great. Okay. I know to round the spine, but to reach it forward. And also relax the elbows and forearms on top of your ankles. Patience so, of open stillness whenever you, you think you found the alignment. And then go ahead and add the breath. The breath is going to help on one and one. Two mindful breaths. And pushing the energy into the hips, to the lung area, to the inner thighs, to the lower body.
Let's now wait on on our mats. And place one of your blocks in between your knee and thighs. Open up your arms. Let's twist. Send in the legs to the left side and rotating the hips. So we can twist and feel a nice stretch on the right side of the body. Nice shot, let's go ahead and come back. Release your chest. And whenever you're ready, slowly so rotate each to the right. To the left shoulder, releasing them through the arm and forearm. Very, very tight. I'm teaching actually more classes than before, but for some reason it's not the same though. <laughs> and uh, my hamstrings are kind of like shortening, and, and it takes me a while to stretch them. Before it was two or three downward dogs were enough, but now I need to take more and more time to stretch. I'm not sure if it's happening to me today, but. Two more here. Couple more here. Then come back. Let's start into one back bend. So I'm going to encourage you that if you have two blocks, place the blocks one on top of each other like this. If you have two blocks. If you don't, you can use one. Normally we use this here. This is our way to coming to set to Banda Sarvangasana. But today I want to encourage you, if you have your gloves, to place one on top of each other and place it underneath you. If you don't have your gloves, maybe it's a, a pillow on top of each other. So it is kind of like higher than we normally do with our bridge pose. Very good. You save them on your blocks or whatever you're using. Your bones are facing up, but because you're so high, they're kind of like leaning a little bit towards your face. You're over talking because of the height of your um, pose. Just stay here for a couple of breaths in this gentle back bend. If you can extend your arms at full and if you're able to grab the green hand and stay in the front of your props, that's good. If not, then grab the outer edges of your neck. Just relax your arms down instead of having them on top of your body. We're just holding here. Present and focusing on your back. With your physical body, relax the ear. Your emotions settle. Half more minutes.
Very good. Everyone, you can stay here or bend the right knee to the chest. Maybe with your right hand, you can touch the knee and now extend the left leg forward. So it depends on how high or how low you are. Or you can maintain your feet flat on the mat or just send that behind you to the chest. Stretch if you think about it, but in a very mindful yin way. Yeah. And a sort of pose. Very good. Now slowly go ahead and then the left knee and exit the right one if you're going forward. If not, you can your feet flat on the mat. Take two more mindful breaths if you're with the left knee to the chest, if you are feeling. Okay. Next, slowly. Bend the right knee, if you flatten the leg, left foot down. So if you're in a very high, high um, Pose, go ahead and take one block and release the sacrum on that remaining block. So go layers. All right, don't just move everything away if you're very high, if you're using more than one prop to lift your up. Then go ahead and move whatever is left to move underneath and slowly release the sacrum down. Open up your feet mat distance apart and let's make sure what you And take your time when you walk in this, this is the pose that is kind of kind of glue it all together and at the same time um, unwind everything for you is that no practice. Good, now place that left foot on top of the right knee to deepen up the pose. And then we're we'll ready, second side, go ahead in. Place that right foot on top of the left knee. And then show up. Use the chest up on us and stay here. Open up your legs so wide and close in our main circles. Massaging their back, massaging your flexors. Go ahead and move in the opposite direction. Very good, everyone. Shavasana. And if there's any other pose or movement that your body's craving for, go ahead. If you're ready to release the body completely, completely on top of your mat and just close your eyes and take a couple of minutes of stillness and go ahead and do Shavasana. Let's stand the body again. So I'm going to do the beginning, but this time, instead of just naming the parts, imagine I need to light to heal and light. Your toenails, your toes, your heels, your ankles. It's washing off whatever to insert the body anymore. And it's just a bringing new energy, new light to our physical body. And it's lifting up to 
chest and shoulders across the collarbones, the arms, the hands, the fingertips, stay from the spine all the way up to the neck and the back of your head. And also set your face. Moving and pain and pain. Every hidden part in your body. Couple of breaths in each beautiful fashion. What is the magic? Stretch. Send your arms above your head, your legs in front of you. To bend your knees right out of your way. Roll to the right side and make the opposition. Your eyes go closed, begin to push yourself up into a comfortable sitting position with your palms together at your heart and gratitude. Gratitude to our physical or mental. The emotional body for being present for working so beautifully alone to give yourself the benefits of the yoga practice. Lifting the heart to bow in your head and dropping all our wisdom within. We respect it. And welcome, Namaste. Mm -hmm.